Perfect. I would like to tell something about the strangers here in this space. We usually have built the animals in the winter. In my winter working place and then I bring it to the beach in spring. And then the whole summer I do all kinds of experiments on the beach, like with the wind and the sand and the water. And then the end of the summer I declare the animal extinct. So they become dead. And they go to the boneyard and since a few years these boneyards are adopted in exhibitions and the in the, in the exhibitions we can reanimate the animal by pumping it up with a compressor. So we just did that. We just pumped up this animal over there and we are pumping up this one animal. So you're gonna see two animals. This is a very special occasion. Usually we show just one animal. Now this animal is the Animalis secundus and it, uh, it has a special driving system. It, uh, you see the bottles up there, they are filled with uh, compressed air and it can use this compressed air to walk. These pumps up here, if they stretch, the animal, it pushes apart the shoulder of the animal, the animal takes one step. Then a next piston gets activated and does the same. So step by step, it walks through the space and uh, it, uh, it works just like a steam machine, you could say. And uh, so it walks uh, and making steam sounds. That's why the period where these animals came about is called the Fapur, the steam period. Maybe we could show the animal to walk, yes? I don't use it anymore because it was suicidal. <laughs> it, it tended to, to break its own back. So when a piston gets an, an opposite uh, activation, it just broke its, its spine. And that's, uh, and that's because they uh, walk on, uh, on uneven surfaces. They can only walk on museum floors. This is why I made this animal especially for the museum. <laughs> the other hand, we have here another animal which has another driving system. It has seven ski poles which push the animal a little bit up and forward. And then it can walk also on fluffy sand and uneven surfaces. And we're gonna, I hope there are a little bit, they are popping up, right? But we can show him it, the, the, the wings come open. So the wings are in now, but when the wind is gentle, the wings come out like this. And if the wind comes from the front, they activate the wings. Here's a small pump. So when moving in the wind, it pumps air in the water bottles up there. There's no water in there, it's just air in there. So it's our used soda bottles. To high pressure, and then the animals can walk on that. In emergency cases, they can walk on that pressed air. Uh, you must imagine 
that these animals are blind and they're deaf, they don't have eyes, and they have to navigate by feeling the sand. So imagine you're on the beach and you cannot see, you can feel the hardness of the sand. Uh, so closer to the sea, the sand will be harder. So, and they can feel that with the sand feeder at the end of the tail. Can you show it? Apart from uh, the sand feeder, it has a, a water feeder. So this flexible tube is vital for surviving on the beach. It goes over the ground about two inches, and it sucks in air all the time. And as soon as it arrives into the sea, it swallows the water and feels the resistance of the water, and then it has to run out of the sea again. And that's why it has these ski poles here. Uh, maybe we can show how they walk. This is the ski poles. You might think about the questions you would like to pose. Yes, somebody has a question. Yes? In the wind, this one will go as fast as the other one, even though it kind of lumbers under, under the power of the pressure, the pressurized the air. Yes. But in the wind, it would go faster, like the other ones do? And it's, uh, well, in the wind, they, they can walk against it. A little bit when the wind is not too, too strong. But uh, normally they walk, in fact, pushed by the wind. So the, this sail here is for letting it walk directly on the wind. So when the wind is uh, south, they can walk on the hard sand for miles. Uh, but in emergency cases, they walk with the ski poles. And they, yes? Faster? When it, with the wind. They have the wind in the back, they call fast. Yes? It's about 180 kilos. Is it 300 stones? Or? Can you break it down in pieces? Shipping yes, it's for shipping and break it about six pieces. Yes? I have a for the um, plastic sail on the front. The function of the spoiler is that. So the, on front you see this, this, uh, this shape there. So when there's a wind, it should throw his nose towards the wind. Then the nose is pushed down and fixed. 
So that it doesn't move, the battery doesn't work. But it's getting better than that. Yes. I made a steel animal, and it was almost five meters high, and it weighed more than three tons, and you could sit in there. Uh, it worked very well on the wind. We tried it out on a runway of an airport, and in fact, it went too fast on it. It broke itself. But now it's in Amsterdam, and I had this dream that this animal would be a sort of yearly festival, just like in Pamplona, you have the bulls out in the street, that this, animal, this big animal would walk over the dam in Amsterdam. But it didn't realize that yet. Yes, um, sorry. I, yes, what the other process was. Okay. Uh, in your talk, you mentioned that you have um, these 13 numbers. Yes. Is there any correlation with the Fibonacci series or any other kind of sequence that you would find anywhere else in nature? Not that I know of, no. It's a, it's a, I, I think there is no relationship with any, uh, not with the stars or the planets or whatever. <laughs> yes? Do they stay on the beach all summer and how do you keep them from running away with the wind? Uh, but running away from the wind is easy to prevent. I just put a pin in the ground and I, I a, a thick rope. But they're on the beach in the, indeed at night. And you would expect that they would be vandalized by people. It never happened in all the 25 years. And in the beginning I thought I needed sort of uh, defense, that sort of poisonous arrows which would come out. But it turns out that the, the strand beast, they have a lot better web and they use their jaw. And, uh, and so it never happens. Maybe, yes? Why do, you call them, okay. Why do you call them animals and not machines? Well, the difference between an animal and a machine is, in principle, there is no difference. We are machines. We work like machines. We are very complicated machines. But in my eyes, we are mechanical on a very low level, you call it chemistry. But it's still, it is mechanical. And so, these are machines, but it is a very primitive animal, you could say. One, one, last question, yes? Which beach do you work? Which, the, the question is, which beach am I working? I'm working, I'm working on a beach which is hard to reach. It's, uh, you can only come there walking. And it's uh, south of Schreveling in Holland. You can find it on Google Maps, Theo Janssen Beach. <laughs> yeah, so now, this is the last question from you. How much weight do you make support? How much weight? Yes, not much weight, I must say. So I want to put this effect on the drones, which I'm struggling with. I want to put thousands of bottles on them. So they have a lot of energy in there, but they cannot carry it. So I must find solutions for that in the coming 20 years. Because this is the period I take. I see in front of me working on these animals that they are better and better surviving. And hopefully, when I leave the planet, then I leave a new specimen on Earth for you. Uh, so I'm working on that, that project, and I hope to realize that I'm working hard on it. And this is just an example to see how primitive the stage is. But hopefully you can see and dream with me how it will become. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much.